Up next, let's enjoy some readings. And when we return, I'll tell you about a book you can win. My name is Ni Adekunle, and I'm the author of this book, Nigeria Scholar Bay. I'll read um, a portion of this book. I'll read uh, from page 45, that's chapter 6, titled Service with Faith. Service with Faith. The year was 1996. The opposition was highly rated and very formidable. The situation looked completely hopeless. The odds were fully and clearly stacked against Nigeria. Even those who believed in miracles would have a hard time believing under circumstances like this. The Nigerian football team was three goals down to the Brazilian side at the soccer finals of the 1996 Olympic Games. Such a lead from a side not half as good as the Brazilian side at the semi-final stage of a football competition was bad enough. With the Brazilians, it's as good as conceding victory to them without any further ado. But that was not the consensus for the Nigerian side. The team played for the love of country and was evident in their passion when by the 78th minute they had scored their second goal. They continued playing with all their strength. They did everything they could to reduce the goal margin. They really played with all their might and at the end of the 90th minute, not only had the Nigerian side reduced the goal margin, they had even up the score line. It was unbelievable and unimaginable. The Nigerians had forced the Brazilian into extra time. In less than five minutes into the extra time, the match was over. Nigeria's Nwanko Kanu had put the ball into the Brazilian nets to give Nigeria the victory. This was one of the most dramatic moments in soccer history. According to FIFA, it was one of the greatest comebacks in international footballing history. To beat the Brazilian side when they were clearly ahead on goals was unthinkable to many. How did Nigeria do it? By faith. The players had faith in themselves and their ability. They were hopeful throughout the match as they made little improvement by scoring. They became more confident of victory. They saw that the odds were against them were surmountable and they truly surmounted the odds and went on to win the match. To serve with faith is to serve with hope and confidence of a positive outcome, even in the face of adversity. Most people will look at Nigeria today and the many odds against us as a nation and say it's a hopeless situation. Truly we have problems that just the thought of them alone can be overwhelming. But faith is the ability to see light in the midst of darkness. Faith says, even though it is night and everything looks so dark and hopeless, I will stand my ground because I know very soon the sun will rise and the day will break. As Nigerians, we must never be hopeless, no matter how bad things look. To serve with faith is to believe that together we can and will make Nigeria great. To serve with faith is to believe that from the rubbles of colonialism, nepotism, corruption, bad leadership, failing infrastructure, and general failing standards, we can together, with commitment to faith and hard work, build the Nigeria of our dreams, the Nigeria which we can all be proud of, the new Nigeria. I'm reading from An After Many Days, um, page 93, and this is um, a part where the children are sort of having an ordinary afternoon, and uh, this part really captures sort of the kind of sibling rivalry, which was you know, in this book. Um, when he returned from the parlor, Bibi had put aside the newspaper and was reading a shoddily printed copy of a fool that they found while rummaging through Fuller's garage and were now taking turns reading by order of seniority. When are you going to finish the book? Ajay asked Bibi. Just about five pages left. Bibi thumbed through what was left of the book. It's so interesting. Should I tell you the story? No. You can be so grumpy sometimes. Why? I don't want to hear, Ajay said, and then threw the second ice cube into his mouth and began to crunch it. Bibi couldn't hold herself back. It's about this marvelous Uguta woman. Oh, I really like her. 
she was very beautiful and loved by her husband. But she was barren and her mother-in-law didn't like her. You're just looking for trouble, Paul said to Bibi. Well, it's not as if I'm going to spoil it for him. It's so tragic, Bibi purred and sat back into the sofa. Okay, I'll just say this one thing and leave it there. I think someone dies at the end. Ajay looked at her. He would refuse to read the book just to spite her. He imagined she would feel something as sharp as pity mixed with guilt and she would try to make it up to him somehow, but he wouldn't give her the chance. Do you know, Bibi was already saying to Paul, that in France, crimes of passion are forgiven. I read something like that in one of Ben Dick's journal. There was a woman who killed her husband with a fork during an argument and she wasn't jailed for murder. Temporary insanity, Paul said. But it depends on the circumstance and on many other things. Port Harcourt is not Paris, Ajay quipped at Bibi. True. Nigeria is not France, like he hadn't made his point. Years later, each time he heard crime of passion, he would think of a woman in Paris with a fork in her hand. But more than that, he would think of the woman in a story Ma had told them. A story that sounded like it happened in the olden days, but which Ma said only took place after the war. There was this woman from Erema who would leave her husband and move in with a man whose house was on the further side of the same village. As was the custom, leaving your husband in that way was an accepted, if reproachable way for a woman to initiate divorce. This woman would leave her husband and stay with the second man for many days, sometimes a whole year. Her people would put pressure on her and she would return to her husband, but soon after the affair would resume. Her husband sent emissaries to beg the man to leave his wife alone, but nothing changed. One day, the man took a machete and chopped off the head of his wife's lover. Then he carried, he carried the head and walked the whole length of the village. And each time he met someone, he asked, This thing I've done, is it good or is it bad? And the person would answer, it is right what you have done, it is good. And when he reached the end of the village, he killed himself, exactly what was expected of a man who had taken the life of another. Like I announced last week, we've got copies of a book to give away and you have a chance to win one. It's titled The Familiar Stranger and Other Stories. It's an interesting collection of short stories written by Frederick Modi, who has been a guest with us on this show. We have 30 copies to give away. All you need to do is to recommend us to a friend or someone on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Get them to either like or follow us and let's know you have done this. We'll pick 30 from the winners and hopefully you might be one of them. So get busy doing this. This is where we have to stop today. As always, please send us your feedback through any of our social media platforms displayed on your screen. I am Olakunli Kasumo. Remember, one great book can change your life. Bye-bye.